Hello everyone, welcome to Kerbal Vision. Today, uh, we've got the return of KSP2 videos again in a mission to Lathe. Yes, we're going to be delivering a rover to Lathe to do scientific analysis on the surface. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that yet because I have not got the science update, but uh, it'll still be pretty cool just um, in our own head cannon to do it. But uh, anyway, here we have liftoff um, of a pretty big rocket. Uh, I just kind of slapped a few boosters on the side. I couldn't be bothered to make a huge fairing a nice looking rocket just because of well we still got wobbly rockets and this was the only design that really worked without too much of a wobble and as we can see here we've got lovely brand new graphics that the games just come out with in patch 5 with the lovely brand new scattering system and some nice improvements to the cloud quality although on Kerbin I've had this issue where uh, all of my graphics no matter what they are like if they're on high uh, for some reason my computer just really can't handle it and it's really odd, because it can handle on every other planet, no problems, but Kerbin's just got this issue for me at least. I might try reinstalling KSP2, that might fix the problem, but uh, I have been having this issue, and there we go, I'm just changing my graphics down, because I wanted to show off the brand new clouds and atmospheres um, by putting my cloud quality at high, so I had to put all the other t qualities down, so um, then I was just changing it there because, this, because the frame rate began dropping. Anyway, here we are starting our, uh, did a little flip back there, but uh, no matter, we can just recover from that, as this rocket is pretty stable when you, um, for recovery of a spin. And also, we have got all the five Kerbals on our mission. We've got Jebediah, Bill, Bob, uh, Valentina, and Tim C. Kerman. The five, uh, the five loyals, five royals. <laughs> um, so, um, here we are just getting ourselves up into a nice orbit, um, uh, this rocket launched a lot slower in real time than it is in the video and uh, yeah so like I said this mission we're going to be delivering this uh, rover to uh, Lathe sounds like a pretty easy mission especially if you're doing it in KSP1 um, or maybe not the easiest of missions but uh, it was like mid-level but for this mission it was an absolute drama of a mission to do um, for a few reasons uh, I'll cover one of them now, but the, uh, I will cover some of the other ones in the future. One of them was that I forgot to put RTGs in my rover, so it took a lot of effort to get the rover um, solar panels on it uh, on the on the rover into a position where the sun can uh, see it, or I should say that when the sun can recharge the panels. So um, as you can see there, I had to do that there. Luckily, I managed to get it rolling over, and if we recharge the batteries. And uh, here we are going to the tracking station. I'll, I'll cover the other ones uh, when we get to uh, Lathe. But here we are just getting ready to start our burn to... Uh, oh, I think here I was just... Uh, yeah, that's right. Something rather happened with the um, my orbit and it just suddenly lost like a lot of my orbit. Um, like I was in within the atmosphere. My periapsis was within the atmosphere. So I just changed that. And here we are. We've got so much fuel on this rocket. So I decided just to uh, force, basically force an encounter, not go for anything too specific. So we'll just very, very slowly turn it over. I put one reaction wheel on it, and um, one of the biggest reaction wheels, um, <clears throat> but wasn't uh, wasn't powerful enough. I still think that the reaction wheels are a little bit underpowered still in KSP2. But uh, here we are beginning our burn to get out to Joule for a start and we'll just get rid of the side boosters and activate the nerve stage and uh, yeah so I might just quickly mention since this is kind of the boring part of the mission just recently um, we've gotten our uh, we've gotten what uh, some of you may know of um, it's called Starlink um, which Elon Musk made and it's some of the best internet in the world um, it's really great and uh, we've got we haven't got anything special we've got like basically the worst version of Starlink but it's still like much better off my old thing so I have some a uh, few little announcements if you haven't keep up to date with my posts and that is I'm going to probably start making a second channel for Microsoft Flight Simulator videos as now I've gotten it because I can actually uh, download it because we've got good internet now um, and I'll probably start doing live streams in KSP2 and KSP1, maybe. Um, not sure where this will turn out, but I'm just saying these are some ideas and the hopefuls that I'm really hoping to do. Like, I actually really want to do these, um, but we'll see how things go. So that's just a few little announcements I wanted to make. 
Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll just uh, get back to the video of what's happening here. So here we are just getting ourselves our a, uh, equatorial encounter with Jewel, just because uh, as hopefully most of you know, uh, Leif as well as Val, Tylo, um, are on a fairly equatorial orbit around um, Jewel, so they're fairly equatorial, so it's nice to get ourselves on an equatorial orbit, and would you look at that, I actually got an encounter with Leif, basically straight off the bat. So uh, we will be decelerating at uh, Leif rather than Jewel, which will make things a bit easier and possibly a bit more efficient. I know it only cost me about 2,000 meters per second um, to do uh, to orbit, get into orbit around Leif, but uh, I actually, when patch 5 came out, I was actually planning on making a video. Uh, I was going to Juna, and I went to Juna, got the whole mission and pretty much wrapped up. But when I docked back with my craft to take me back to Kerbin, for some reason the bug hit me again, which stops, uh, which drains your fuel faster than what it should. So um, that basically made me lose all hope in the game again. I got really angry with the game because there was basically nothing I could do with it. Um, I just got a few screenshots, that's about it, I got from the mission. Um, so, yes, uh, it's a bit unfortunate what happened there, but uh, luckily I managed to get my enthusiasm, enthusiasm a bit, uh, back a bit. Um, so, here's the mission I'm doing now, and I thought life was a nice place to visit because I, we of course have got the brand new, very lovely atmospheric improvements in the game which I probably should have mentioned a bit earlier on, and that's why we're going to Leif. Uh, there are still a few little bugs where you can see like a funny line above the atmosphere around uh, planets with an atmosphere. But other than that, everything is uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, much better than they were when it was starting. Very good. It was uh, probably one of the best moves I reckon they've ever made, uh, so far at least. It was hiring Blackrack. Um, he has just really done his work magic on the game, and I really hope that they help him get, I mean, get him to do more work for them um, to do with ocean shaders. I mean, the shaders in KSB2 now are actually pretty good, but um, they could always be better. Um, he could definitely make them a lot better with um, his skills. And uh, also here, just quickly, we are getting rid of those other stages just so that they crash down into the ground because I was planning on doing a little bit of deceleration with the nerve engine just to try and get our trajectory correct. Um, unfortunately, I didn't quite get it right over the land we kind of only just hit one of the islands uh as you can see down there if i had the camera went up the right way i did get quite a few screenshots um but uh yeah so yeah i really hope that they get blackrack to help them with all of their graphics because he's really good at them and here we are just coming down now and i will start talking about some of the issues i had with this landing number one Oh, you might notice a little quick save and quick load. Um, I would hope it's not too noticeable, but you might notice it. Um, and everyone will notice it now because it's just coming up now. Um, but for some reason, um, every time I came down, my rover would flip. I mean, I didn't put the wheels very far out, which I guess was kind of a bit of fault on my, but it should still, it still probably should be able to hold itself upright. I mean, it did for most of the uh, trip, I like, the rover round I did with it. Um, as the name Rover would suggest, uh, but um, it just kept on flipping over to the side and when I come down a touchdown and then I wouldn't be able to roll it back over um, to the right way up. So what I had to do was, I, there we go, I just did another quick load there. I had to turn on um, no crash damage because uh, there was a few parts uh, breaking because uh, like for example uh, a part would break off uh, the side um, things and then they'd basically crash into the rover. It was a bit uh, crackeny, but it would bash into the rover. I I could make a video on actually all the bugs that happened during this, but it would just cause other parts to explode uh, unusually. And uh, anyway, I tried decoupling them. This is like my sixth attempt at this, and this was at like 10:30 at night for me. So I, I really did want to get to bed soon. So what I did is I unrealistically deployed the solar panels to recharge the batteries tried for ages and ages and ages to write it the right way up um, but I didn't couldn't do it um, I tried doing stuff with the wheels to get them to go the right way up and then I went to the tracking station to try to uh, getting rid of the debris to see if that would fix it um, and unfortunately it didn't quite fix it but don't worry we will find a fix for it in a minute which uh, hopefully we'll be cutting to that soon 
yes, yeah, so you can see I was trying again, and uh, actually, what I found, the solution was, was to roll our way into the water. And we'll see that just in a second. I'm um, just waiting for the cart, and yes, here we are. This is what I did. This was basically sheer luck that this actually ended up happening. I somehow turned myself around, and wow, look at that. We actually managed to ride ourselves. And uh, yes, now that we've actually gotten ourselves out of um, the water, or once we get ourselves out of it at least, um, yeah, I think it's a really well designed rover. I did a lot of work in this rover. I mean, well, I didn't actually do much work in it. I kind of threw it together and I ended up with a good design. But uh, also, I hope everyone will excuse me. I did actually um, put on infinity electricity um, as well. Uh, I, think I'll sh I think I showed that, or well, I will show that at some point. Uh, I turned that on because, well, I've shown that all you need to do is just basically uh, stop the rover, time warp a little bit, recharge the batteries, and then you just keep on roving. You can't go very far, as you can see. Um, a bit of a design flaw on my part, but um, I thought rather than just stopping and starting all the time, making the video just unnecessarily boring, I would turn on infinity f uh, electricity and we can go for a little explore around. Um, and here we are having a sunrise. I'm actually really hitting myself in the leg because uh, I did not... Uh, that was not even a saying, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but um, I'm really annoyed with myself. I didn't uh, get a sunset image of uh, the sunset on life, um, which was a little bit annoying. But uh, uh, hopefully, I, th I think hopefully most of you have seen the sunset images and what the beautiful new atmospheric atmospheres look like. And I feel like the new atmosphere in KSB2, and on Life at least, actually has this, like, you're on a cold planet far away from the sun. It's it's cold here, but there's possibly life. It's the, the kind That's the kind of feel I have for it. And um, also, those rocks aren't very collidable either. Uh, I was just testing them out to see if they would become collidable or something. But, uh, yeah, so, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, I feel I do really feel that K, K, um, Black Crack has actually given the right feel to how Lathes are supposed to feel in KSP2. KSP1, it just I just felt that it didn't feel right. When KSP2 came out, it just didn't really feel right. But now that Black Crack's made this update, it didn't. It actually really feels good. The only um, actual scatter I liked for it, in, for example, in KSP1, was Spectra scatter. It actually had this added this feel to it, which I actually really likes. Which I actually really like it gives it its interest it doesn't just feel like another Kerbin it actually adds like uh, these spots and uh, glowy bits in the sky and actually adds like a turquoise no not really turquoise but it's this greeny blue like more than this atmosphere on it. it was actually more greeny but yeah it was just it was really nice um, to see that he's actually done some changes from what KSP1 looks like um, with, with Scatter as well too so uh, anyway, here we are, are going to plant our flag. We got Jebediah out on EVA, and um, as I fail to use the camera, um, we'll just awkwardly maneuver it back towards Jebediah. Uh, whenever he pops back into camera, unfortunately, we completely missed the flag, um, which is ob quite obviously one of the most important parts of the mission. But uh, here we are. So um, yeah, that's. Uh, I think this mission turned out really well. I'm actually really glad that I managed to get this mission done without having any bugs that cause um, me to have to use an unrealistic amount of cheats. I, I, I do find that I do have to use cheats occasionally, and I don't feel too bad doing it just because most of the time when I use cheats, it's when the game plays up. Um, so I feel that that's like a little bit more acceptable. I try not to do it, but like I said, this was at really late at night. I didn't want to have to bother. Anyway, that basically concludes this video. There'll be a few videos on screen. Uh, giving you an idea of what content of mine you can watch and my channel to subscribe to if you haven't subscribed to it yet. Thanks for watching this video as always. I will see you next time.